Ah. Hi, welcome to Misaligned Learning. I'm Jackie, and today we're going to be talking about orthographic image planes in our Maya scene. So here I've got a brand new Maya scene, nothing's loaded up. And let's say we want to bring in some 2D references to start modeling with. One way to bring in an image plane is to go looking in the camera that we want. So here I'm just set by my default of my four views. I've got my perspective top, front, and side. So over here, I'm looking through the top. I'm going to go under view and go to image planes and we could import a movie or an image. I'm going to load up an image for this example. Now I have my project set. If you don't know how to set a project, I recommend looking into that. Um, but here I have it set so that I'm going to go by default to my source images folder where I've got mine ready to go. So here are my orthos that I'm going to use for this example. I'm looking through my top camera, so I want to load up my top image plane. There we go. This is going to bring in a plane with the image on it. So it's going to match the scale. It's not going to distort or stretch our image. It's going to bring it in um, based on the dimensions of the image that we have selected. Now here, let's go to our front. And this time, let's use a shortcut. I'm going to load up an image plane from that icon there. And this is our front camera, so let me load in our front image. All right, and I'm just leaving these in the center of my scene for a little bit longer. Now let's go into our side camera. Now this is going to be a little less obvious. Same step, I'm going to load up my image plane, but side is actually the right camera in Maya by default. So even though it's labeled side, we're actually looking through a right camera, but we're looking at the left side of our model. So you just want to be aware of this. This is going to depend on what the artwork was labeled as. Um, and if it was recognized as left is the left side of the object or looking from the left. So here for this demonstration, looking at the left side here is going to be my left image plane. So I'm going to load that up. Now I've got them all stacked here in the middle of my scene. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the scale of all these image planes is relative to each other. Image planes are just these objects. They're just planes. So I can manipulate these just like I would any object. I can move it around. I can scale it. I can rotate it. <laughs> I can do everything that I want it to do to an object. So I want to make sure, and let me click on the space bar here to maximize this view right now. I want to make sure that my object is working in the different views. Let's say this character had a long tail and maybe they scaled down the artwork um, so that the artwork could fit in one of the views. So we want to make sure that everything's hooking up. This is all working out fine. We've got the head of the character lining up here, the feet, I'm looking over at the width compared to the height and everything's looking good. So we don't need to override and scale any of these to be different. So I'm all set. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to clear out our acting area so that we have space to model without intersecting our image planes. Let me hit the space bar again so we can go to all of our views. And now, like I said before, we can move these image planes just like objects. So I want to take this top image plane and I want to push it away. So I'm pushing it below the grid here so that it's not in the way of my of my geo that I'm going to model here. And this is our front view, so I want to push it back. If you get turned around, because you'll see that we can look at these from both views, so perhaps you're here and you've pushed it the other way. The red flag is that you'll see that the artwork is now in the foreground and the grid is in the background. We want to make sure that the grid is always in the foreground when we're looking through our camera for these orthographic views. So we want to push this away. Another thing you could look into is if you go here in perspective, so long as your camera's visibility is on, so here, this is my front camera. If it's not on, I can go over here and just make sure that I've turned on the visibility. But now that I can see it in my scene, I can see more clearly that this is where the front camera is. I see the grid and I wanna make sure my image plane is pushed behind. And now for the side, so here's that right camera. It's on the right side of our scene as we're looking into our scene. And I want to push my camera, or I'm sorry, my image plan back and away. Now we could be conservative and just push them right outside of our acting area here. 
or we can push them farther back. We just want to make sure it's not intersecting our model and also that it's not so far away that we're going to get any clipping from our camera because it's it's too far. So these qualify, they're within that threshold. All right, now that I've got them set up in my world space here, I want to make sure that they're working relative to the grid. So if I look at my side and my front views, so I've got these two here, I want to make sure that my, my asset is ready to be modeled so that it's sitting on the ground. So it's in the Y positive um, axis. So I'm going to move these up and I'm moving them up together because I already saw that they were lined up together. So to maintain that alignment, I'm just going to move them together. And then the other thing I want to check for is, is everything lined up according to the, the axis so that I can utilize symmetry. So here, looking at the front view, I just want to make sure it's in the center. If this was my artwork, how it loaded in, I would want to move this over. There's a little bit of eyeballing that has to happen here if it's not already put there in the image that you're looking through. But that's fine, because once you start putting geometry in here, you can always wiggle it, move it around so that you can get it perfectly locked in. All right, so that's the basics of it, but let's take this a little bit further. Let's talk about if we have multiple views. So if we're not only just getting the front side of our character, but maybe we have the back view as well that's informative to our model, so we want to load that up. You'll notice that the orthographic views that come by default are just this top, front, and side. Even if we go into our panels here and we go under these orthographic views, again, I have the option of front, side, and top as my selections. But Maya actually has a few more orthographic views by default that are ready for us to toggle on. So if I'm looking through this view over here, I can hit my space bar and then I left click on the word Maya here in the middle and you'll see a bunch of cameras that are at my disposal here. So if I want to look through the back camera, I can release on the back camera option here. And now in this panel, I'm looking through the back camera, it says back down here. And now this back camera has been loaded into my scene. So let's add an image plane from our back view. So I'm going to go to our shortcut here and go back in. And this time I'm going to select the back view here. All right. So now we can see a bit of a problem because when we're looking through our back camera, we're going to see our back and our front image planes. They're both stacked within here. We also need to make sure that everything is loaded up so that the image plane is on the other side of the grid. So first things first, I can just push this back so that it's now on the other side. But now we're seeing our front image plane, which is blocking our grid. We also need to ensure that everything's lined up. So first things first, let's get these lined up to work together. Whichever image plane is currently in the foreground, let's make sure that that one has some transparency on it. So right now I push this back one behind. So this is in my foreground. So I want to go into the alpha gain of this image plane. So I have this one selected. I can go into my channel box or my attribute editor, but I want to go into my shape node. And here in my alpha gain, I want to turn that down. So I'm going to turn it to 0.5. And now you'll see that this front image plane has some ghosting on it. So I'm going to take this new image plane that's behind and I'm going to move it so that it's lining up with that front view. I could turn this down even more if I'm still having trouble seeing. And then this back view. I can move this around and line these guys up. So that's looking good. Now that I've got that working, let me set this back to one. And now let's talk about how we can set up our scene so that we can use both of these. There's one rather simple way, and that is that we set up these image planes so that they only toggle on when we're looking through the camera that we want to see the image plane for. So if I'm looking through my front image plane or from my front camera, I apologize. Here's my front camera and here's the front image plane. So I select this, 
If I go into my attribute editor and I open up my image plane attributes, the first question here is how it will display. By default, it says in all views, but I could toggle that to say, I only want it to go through a particular camera, which in this case is the front camera. So now you'll see that that image plane disappeared from my perspective view. It also disappeared from my back view. But if I look through the front, it's still here. I can see it over here. It's selected to the side. So now let's do that for the other camera. So this is my back camera, my back view, and I could say I want it to only be active when I'm looking through the back. So now when I'm looking through the front camera, I see my front image plane, my back camera, I see my back image plane. This absolutely works. But there's another way that we can set it up where we don't need to make it so that it's only through that camera, so that if we want to enter things through different views, sometimes that gives us some more options. So let me toggle these guys back on. So I'm going to say in all views, and let me grab the other one, and I'm going to say in all views. So the other way that we can set this up is just by putting our cameras and our image planes in the other order. So if I'm looking over here in my perspective view, Here's my back camera. If I push this to the inside of my front image plane, you'll see that I can now see the grid and then see my back image plane here. And let's do the same thing for the front view. I'm going to push the front image plane, or I'm sorry, the front camera, so that it's now within. I can pull all of these back a little bit so I give myself the space that I had before. But you'll see because these cameras are orthographic, we can push them in and out as much as we'd like. There's no distortion because there's no lens to it. It's just orthographic. And now because these are on the inside, when I look this way, I see my grid, I see my image plane. When I look this way, I see my grid, I see my image plane. So now I don't need to toggle off their visibility through other cameras. I prefer this setup because I can easily then enter into different views. And sometimes that doesn't work so great when you have it set to in the camera view. For some reason, it seems to be buggy. Okay, let me toggle over to another scene that I have set up where we can see all of this played out. Okay, so here's another view where everything's all loaded up and we can see the setup from an aerial view. So if you're looking through the front, we see the front of the character and then the front image plane behind it. If we're looking through the right camera, we're actually looking at the left side of our model here. So we have the left image plane. And if we have both views loaded, we make sure that our cameras are within the image planes and the image planes are on our perimeter. Let's go back to the other view. And let's talk about some other preferences that we may want to set up now that we've got image planes loaded into our scene. So we talked about one where we could toggle so that we're only looking at the image plane um, when we are looking through that camera. But perhaps we want them to be visible in all the image planes or in all the cameras except our perspective here. So we have an option here. If I'm in my perspective view, I can go under show and I can just toggle off image planes. This is going to hide image planes in just this panel. So now I can see my image planes through all my other views, but in just this view, they're off. Let me turn that back on. Another option is that we might want to toggle off image planes in all of our views all at once. What I can do is I can select my image planes and we're going to go into our display layers. So this is by default below your channel box down here. And with them selected, I can say create layer from selected. This is going to create a brand new layer. If I double click, I can name this. And I'll hit save. And now with this created, I can toggle off their visibility as objects here, and that will be their visibility for all the viewports. So if I want to toggle those off, 
All right, I hope that cleared things up for you. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy these demos, please subscribe to my channel.